Okay, I'm going to try recording this one more time. Uh, this is the introduction to Hummingbird and to some of the different interfaces that you can do between uh, Rhino and Revit. So uh, just as a kind of recommendation, uh, some of the things I showed in, in lab uh, the day that I originally recorded this video, I talked a little bit about the roof uh, on the High Museum of Art, um, which uh, which has a, a kind of a, a logic to it that I think could be applied to the roof of the salon in a particular way that's affected by the uh, affected by daylight or some other condition whereby each of these different little pieces could be rotated or, or shifted around uh, depending upon their location over the roof. You could orient them programmatically, but at any rate, they ought to be somehow linked to some kind of parametric derivation. Um, and you can develop this in either Rhino or Revit. And so what I wanted to talk about in this lab was just how you can actually uh, move back and forth between the two pieces of software. So first, just to talk a little bit about how you might uh, export your salon model into, into Rhino in order to maintain some of the geometry. I'm just going to go to the export settings here uh, inside of Revit and go to the CAD formats. And under DWG, uh, it brings up a, a dialog box. And if you hit this dot, 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 it's going to bring up some of the export settings. And here, the one big important change that you want to make is to shift this from, be, from exporting meshes from solids to ACES solids, which will maintain the... Uh, which will maintain the connection to uh, to Rhino, uh, ensuring that you have uh, solid geometry going through. So one more time, it's right here. All right, just hitting next there, saving. stupid laptop. So once that's saved, then you can import it back in here to, no, that's good, it'll be in the video. <laughs> uh, once you, you can bring that back into, into Rhino here, and you'll see the difference in so much that there are now solid components just like they are in uh, Revit, and in particular, it maintains all your layer structures and so forth. And if you hit shaded view, you can see those walls and columns and everything kind of coming in with the same kind of detail as solids already sort of trimmed and boolean, very easy to use to actually put things together. So vice versa, and here you can actually see the section box actually comes in and the section cut uh, come, came in. So vice versa, going from Rhino back into Revit, again we'll use the DWG format, uh, DWG, desktop, um, and what you're going to need to do in this case in order to manipulate the settings is to hit options. And these typical options here don't actually have the appropriate settings. We want to hit edit schemes and we're going to make a new one. You can call it whatever you'd like, unnamed 00. Um, here, the big change that we need to make is to, uh, is to shift the export surfaces as so that they're not exporting as curves but also as solids. Uh, meshes will stay as meshes, but uh, exporting surfaces as solids will uh, make sure that you've got the appropriate geometry going back into Revit. Uh, we can hit close and hit OK to save here. And I'll just call this test. And using that new set of settings, that's how we're going to move back and forth between the two. Okay, so uh, Hummingbird now. Uh, that just is a brief introduction to how to move back and forth between these. I'm just going to make a new uh, Rhino file here. So uh, you should download the Hummingbird file from uh, Moodle, the Hummingbird installer. It's a very straightforward uh, kind of installer. The one thing that you're going to want to make sure you do is close Rhino and close Revit before you run the installer. You won't see anything. So I've already run the installer to save your time. Um, so here you can see what it results in is it actually creates a series of new buttons inside of Grasshopper 
And on the Revit side, when we go to add-ins, you'll see that there's also a model builder here uh, in, in that, that, that's actually going to allow us to import the Hummingbird components. I'm going to also make a new file here in Revit. Okay, so some of these components, when I hit this, you can see that they're basically organized around the Revit, com with the Revit nomenclature, the Revit components. And so if I do something like walls, um, put a wall component in. What this is going to do is basically allow you to interface between the two pieces of software using a CSV, a curve separated values file, which is coming, which is basically a, an Excel spreadsheet that has a whole series of values that are associated with it that then can be imported back into Revit and translate anything that you have in Grasshopper in as real Revit components with all of the parameters predefined. So uh, with each of these components here today, I'll show the topo surface and I'll show the walls just as examples. You can see both of them have right and path associated with them. And these, the right is always going to be controlled by a toggle, just a Boolean toggle, basically an on off switch. And I'm going to copy paste that down here to the topo surface as well. And then we need a panel to actually define uh, the path. This is the where it's going to actually write the Excel file for you to uh, for you to locate. Then when we go when we go into Revit, we're going to import it back in. You need to know where that file is at, where that Excel file is at. So in order to actually define a location, say like the desktop. Now, if you're on a machine in the labs, you're only going to be able to write to uh, parts of the hard drive that are underneath or behind your like your documents folder uh, behind your user. Uh, so if I just go to the documents folder here, right click and go to properties, I can locate, well here, let's do it with the desktop. Right click and go to properties. It's actually going to give me the target and I'm just going to copy that and then paste it into this panel. And this is going to be basically where it's going to write that file to. And then the new file will also want a panel for, but this one will just be say walls. And this is the name that we're going to have associated with the file that we're going to make. Now we can actually deal with geometry. So if I take a curve component and kind of draw something relatively intense here. And I'll put a curve container into, rot into Grasshopper. And set one curve. That curve is now in my container and I'm going to put it in here to the walls component. I can also define the wall type if I want associated with the wall type that's already in my Revit file and I can define the height but those I can also of course define later on. I'm going to put one more panel in here that's going to be used to actually see what the output looks like um, and this is where we can actually monitor to make sure that the file is being written correctly. So we're not going to see an error up until we hit the true button. It's going to say, it's telling us we've added the wall uh, CSV file uh, and I'll flip that back to false. Otherwise it's going to keep writing over the top of that file. If we come out to the desktop here you can find that Excel file. I'll open it just to show you what it looks like real quick. And here is our basically our common separated values. A row uh, defining the elements, the action, uh, is to add these walls. Uh, the wall is the object that we're adding and then the values are all of the different dimensions that, that we're going to associate with that wall. It's as simple as that. Uh, I'm going to hit close to make sure and shut that back down before trying to import it into Revit. Um, now what I want to do is go to the Hummingbird component under the add-ins button, hit model builder. It's going to error out with a couple of things. These are just glitches in the file. What we want to do is create elements from the file and you can see by default here it already is looking at the desktop but if it's uh, if your file isn't associated with this location you can navigate to it here uh, so here I'm just going to select the desktop and say OK and then it's going to locate any CSV files that are in that location and again once you have this set up it should just maintain that connection uh, all the way through. At this point you can hit process and it should process that file and turn it into a series of lines. Interestingly, uh, it seems to have imported my curves as a set of straight components, um, which I wasn't expecting. Anyway, if you go into 3D view here, you can see um, what these walls actually look like. It already gives them a default height just as they come into uh, just as they come into Revit. 
Um, I think that the curves need, uh, the curves just took the, the series of points that I clicked and, and turned them into straight walls rather than all of the curvature components. Uh, so back in Rhino here, I'm going to go ahead and do create a new plane and rebuild that plane in order to give it some points and turn the control points on and just move these vertically get the curves out of the way there just to make a small topo surface the points or excuse me the the topo in uh, Rhino is going to come into Grasshopper and you can see that we actually want to bring it in as a series of points. So in order to do that I'm going to select this surface and go to Curve from Objects and here's where we typically come to make a wireframe but we can also extract points. But before I do that I need to increase the number of points on here so I'm going to rebuild it once again uh, and maybe take it up to like 40 by 40. Let's call it 40 by 80. And at this point now I can extract those points. Well, I've got them selected. I'll make a point container here in Grasshopper. And right click to set multiple. And I've got all these points now associated and I can put them into this topo file. I can drag the path location down from this panel that has my desktop defined and then I can also make a new panel to define the name of the file. This one I'll call Topo. And again I'll swap this panel in so I can see if there's any errors. We'll hit the true button. Topo surface completed successfully. Flip it back to false on the toggle and back into Revit again and into our Hummingbird component create elements from file. You can see now it's these two different CSV file types here, one called Topo. And again, I'll hit process. I'm gonna think a while with all those points. And once that's done, you can see that it's actually created a Topo here in And you can see that it's inferred from those points a topo model inside of inside of Revit for us. So that's roughly the way the hummingbird will work. Um, you can use it to create, um, uh, as I pointed out at the beginning, you can use it to create uh, a pretty much any kind of or any of the main sorts of components inside of Revit, uh, adaptive components, floors, grids, levels. So. Uh, in particular, with adaptive components, you could uh, imagine being able to associate, say, uh, some kind of a light shelf like that from Piano's High Museum uh, in order to put ad adaptive variations on it and bring them, model them here in Rhino and Grasshopper and then bring them over into Revit. Anyway, here's hoping that the audio actually...